time this interview is out, Teen Wolf, the movie is going to be out. I can't believe I'm saying that. What is that like for you to be building up to this release? It's, um, it's really thrilling. It's, um, something that dreams are made out of, you know, when we, when we started Teen Wolf so many years ago, we were just on, we were on a set and we were making this, uh, Romeo and Juliet story about werewolves. I mean, who knew 12 plus years later that we would be here having this huge Paramount plus release, all this buzz still, uh, you know, dedicated friends, dedicated fans to, um, to our story and, and, and where we are. And it's just, um, it's just really, it's just a pinch me moment, I think is probably the best way to say it for all of us. I mean, I, I will speak for the cast and crew. It was amazing to have this opportunity to get back together again, no time, you know, wasted or lost. And we, I think are all very grateful and we know that this doesn't happen for everybody. And so we really kind of soaked up every moment that we could. Yeah, and honestly, shout out to the fans. It has been five years since the last Teen Wolf episode aired. What was that like stepping back into your character and how has she kind of grown from these years? Great question. Um, it was an honor, it was an honor to be back, you know, honor to be a mom to so many on and off screen, to be quite honest. And uh, you know, the writers, Jeff and the writers did uh, I think a very smart thing in putting it you know, far enough in advance that we all had a little bit of progress. And so I think that for people that are, um, you know, have been waiting, including myself, five years to see where we all are, I think that's that's a part of the joy of the film is to see where everybody kind of ended up, who they are now, experiences, thoughts, alliances, relationships, you know, all, all the things, so to speak. Yeah, and I mean, just from the trailer alone, fans can see that it is action-packed. It's going back to the roots of Beacon Hills. What can they expect if they're diehard fans of the original series? Well, I think you can expect to um, the unexpected. I'll say that. Uh -huh. I will say that I think that, again, a, a nod to the writers and Jeff, when you have a hundred episodes, when you have that much rich material to pull from, I think they did a really great job of, you know, uh, gathering the characters, the cast of characters that they did, gathering the storyline and really putting it together in a way that will hopefully honor um, friends and fans of the show and also honor people that maybe haven't seen it. You know, they, they'll be able to pick it up and actually watch it and hopefully understand and come along for the journey and then maybe start back with season one of Teen Wolf. But, you know, I think they, they really tried to do that to, to, so that nobody, nobody is left in the dark and understanding where we are and what we're doing. Yeah, definitely. And the fans are so excited for this. I've seen so much all over social media. I'm wondering, since they're such a big part of this, do you have a favorite fan interaction or moment? So many. I mean, just the fact that you're asking me about interactions with people that love something that you've created is just like, I did this earlier today. It's just like, <laughs> who would have thought, who, who would have thought that, you know, a germination of an idea in someone's brain all these years ago would lead to um, such um, fascination and such um adornment from from people around the world that's that's really i think you know it i i just want to speak globally for a second here it's like we you know this show has impacted so many um around the world and, and if you were to tell me as a young actor that one day you were going to have this audition that was going to lead you on this journey and that you could theoretically almost be anywhere in the world and if you present yourself in a way someone's going to know who you are mm -hmm. i would have i mean that's astronomical. I mean, I've won, we've all won the lottery when it comes to that. I'm wondering if you could describe this film as a whole in three words, what would they be? Wild, unexpected, heartwarming. Those are probably the three, yeah, heartwarming. It really, um, you know, I mean, uh, cat's out of the bag. Uh, <laughs> our character Allison is back in a way. And so I think that, you know, there are maybe some unresolved feelings around that character and her departure from the show. And for that part of the fandom that really needed to, to, to see more of that character's progression or, you know, where she would be now. I, I hope, I hope and um, that they get a lot of satisfaction from that. You know, that that's the fun part is 
is again, without giving away too much, a hundred episodes, yeah. you know, that they were able to pull from and, and come up with and, and have enough time that, um, you know, projected into the story that, and of course, Beacon Hills, wild things can happen. Crazy yeah. wild things can happen. And they do, they will, they will. Definitely. And I mean, this is a movie. It started out as a show. Was it kind of different coming on to a movie set, knowing that the shots were going to be different and the storyline was different? Do you prefer one over the other for this series, I guess? So great question. Um, We like to joke that when we were shooting the TV show, it felt like we were shooting an independent movie every week because the days were arduous. They were very taxing, long, very, very artsy. You know, one of the reasons why I believe that we have um, one of the best camera crews in the business is because, you know, they are allowed creatively to take risks to, you know, to to come up conceptually with different ways to shoot things and, and really are given a, a wide swath of, of creativity there. Um, and so, uh, you know, so we were used to long days for, for the art of it. What was interesting was, you know, you have you have five to seven days to shoot a, a, a TV show and it goes, it goes, it goes. And you have a certain you have a certain pace that it needs to be at. Right. Yep. So then you're given 30 days to tell a longer story. And so instead of it being like this, it's more like, OK, OK, great. And so you're able to almost enjoy it in a different way and to experience actually the actual physical shooting of it. Um a friend of mine said that, you know, when you shoot a movie, it's, 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 it's shot in twos. So there's not a lot of single coverage. There's a lot of two coverage. And so it makes the day go a little bit faster. And so we were in and out of scenes a little bit faster. So we were like, wait, are we, are we, for, are we forgetting something? Does, uh, is there, are, they, are you going to like put in some CGI stuff that's happened? Like, so it was, it was, it's a really great question because I now know that shooting a television version and shooting a movie version from top to tails, completely different experience. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, there is still CGI going on, but yeah, to totally. prefer like one over the other, would you do one again or? So the CGI, I, I, I feel CGI kind of enhances whatever project that you're on. It shouldn't be 90% because yeah. then for me, I'm watching something that is unattainable right? When there's too much action, when it's too perfect, when everybody lands in the perfect, like, you know, three point pose and, and, you know, and nobody, nobody gets a scratch and everyone looks perfect and everything is well lit a little too much. So for me, it's, it's, you have to have a certain amount of practicality. You have to have a certain amount of grounding. And, and I feel like our franchise does that. You know, I, I, I feel like our creatives understand that, um, also an homage to the horror stories that came before us. You know, there's a lot of, if you look back, you know, this was Night of the Living Dead or, you know, the, the, you know, our guys are always calling back to older films that influenced them. And I think that's really important too. Mm -hmm, definitely. And my last question for you, I know this release is huge and everyone's excited for it, but do you have any future projects that you can hint at or talk about? Oh, I'm really, oh, thank you. Um, yes, I'm very excited. I just worked with um, this little known actor. I mean, he's just starting out. His name's Kevin Hart. I feel like he's going to have a future in this business. Maybe. Um, maybe. So watch for that name, Kevin Hart, H-A-R-T. Um, I just worked with him actually on a project here in Atlanta, and that I think is coming out um, this year, and it's called Die Harter. It's a takeoff on the Die Hard thing where he believes that he's this giant like superhero dude and uh, he's really not. I play his publicist and it was a lot of fun. He is a lot of fun. That whole cast of characters is a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I can't wait to see it. And congratulations on everything again. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you so much for um, coming along on the journey. I always say that we wouldn't be here without friends and fans of the show and people that have supported us for all of these years on and off the air. And we are super excited for everybody to see it. We're, we're just as excited for us to be a part of it as for you to see it and enjoy it.